The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everybody, we are back here after this news report and what was that? I saw that the, uh, what was the news that came out at 10? Oh, ISM is strong today. Oh, okay, well what we're looking at here is a situation where the Dow's down 104, not too bad, but it's down 104 at 34,000. 542. Uh, it's making this arch formation. It's really important that there is some support in the 35, uh, 34. Let's see what I said here for subscribers to my opening call. <clears throat> yes, we went right through the 34,585 support. We're now at 34,545. Uh, uh, that's not so good because uh, those automated Chapman Wave support levels. Very often they act, look, you can see how this was resistance right here on the way up, and then we came down. All right, so this is, you know, it's a very interesting thing. As I was looking at the market over the weekend, and when I did my uh, market overviews for subscribers um, on Saturday, I think it was, um, yeah, there were so many aspects. Look, the SMHs, Holding really well. I mean, look at this. I, I should mention we are still short. We almost got stopped out of part of the short position. This is the core short of the SMH itself. Shorted right here. Made a high of 161.17 on July the 31st. Next day gave a candle that said, you know what? After the doji candle breaking to a lower, a lower low than the previous day, that's just a, a tip off to say with the MACD weak, the stochastic uh, week, that there should be a turnaround, even though the nine period moving average was strongly over the 14. So before the open on the, what was that? I think it was the second, second of August, because on the first of August, we went short the Dow. So it was the second of August. Uh, we went short at just over 159. So that's, you know, what was 161.17 was the all time high. So within less than two points of the high, and then we added the uh, three times short SOXS, but and we got beautiful trades over there, and now we've just got this this core position, and I have to tell you the SMHs, which I consider to be a lead indicator of the general market, holding very well, and look at the weekly chart here, yeah, the middle chart, that just holding very nicely. Nine is over the fourteen, price is over the nine. Um, the MACD is weak, stochastic is weak, on balance volume is weak, and yet that nine is just, uh, it's imperative to monitor. Let me just show you why. Look, when um, a lot of people were talking about the dollar breaking down, dollar breaking down, and I remember CNBC, there was one particular person said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, that's the end of the dollar. And there were even uh, texts and emails from different uh, financial institutions that send out these things automatically. They said, uh-oh. And I kept saying, I might be wrong, but that nine period holding so strongly over the 14 period moving average, I can't consider that bearish. That's really bullish. And look where we are. We've just spiked up. The dollar is down seven cents, uh, seven ticks at 104.73. Way over the nine. Nine is way over the 14. 104.13 is the support of the nine period moving average, 103.89. It can change at any point. Look what happened over here when it finally did. It made it lower highs. Here it's making higher highs. So at this particular point, the dollar, uh, I, I think this is the lead indicator, and that's really important. Okay. So with that said, let me just have a drink of water. Look what we've got. You've got this strong, the SMHs turning down, but the, it's still the price is over the nine, and the nine is over the fourteen. So this is a process that says there's a chance 
that if the semiconductor SMH market vectors uh, ETF can start to close under 150 for two out of three sessions, maybe this week, it could even be next week, without pushing into the 158, 159 area, um, then you could start to see the general market be pu pu pulling back. But at this point, there's a, a real big diversion, a bifurcation for sure. And I have to respect that. So within that context, Really, what we're looking at is <clears throat> there is strength and there's rotational strength at this particular point. For instance, hack uh, is where we, we're trying to get in. We haven't we we wanting to get in, and it just holds. Look how nicely. Finally, the prime cybersecurity stocks. This this ETF is doing what it should have been doing ages ago. I don't know why it's doing it now. It should have been uh, most of going into the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, it just didn't. And now finally, in 2023, the last four months, not big, but it has been moving up. So that's why I'm saying there's a big divergence between so many areas. Look at this, the IYT. Oh, I didn't do my uh, uh, my opening intro. Look, look at this dreaded H pattern right here. But the, uh, I share Dow Jones Transportation Average index fund, <clears throat> too many words. If you look at it on the monthly basis, it's not a big deal. It's holding quite nicely. If you look at it on the weekly basis, yep, I made a peak D and now it's pulling back. I haven't got a down arrow yet. As soon as it closes decisively under the 14 period moving average, I can put a down arrow. But it's a sell mode in the daily. And if you look at jets and this, the oil the skyrocketing oil prices, that's an issue. Look, yeah, look at jets made a lower low. And that's the U.S. Global Jets ETF. And the monthly chart got repelled to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there. Look at that. It just keeps going there. It can't handle it even when it goes above it. It can't, it can't handle the truth. So the most important thing that we're looking at here is in this kind of mixed market, you've got to put your chips. I shouldn't have said that. I, we've got to put your, your money in areas that seem to be holding well and actually, cash is still not a bad position. And I have to also mention that the DBA, the Agricultural Fund, which we are long, um, look at this. It's doing very nicely. It keeps having this yo-yo impact of going to the 22s, then plunging down to the 20 level, then up to the 22s, then back down to 20 or 21, and then rallies. Um, it's not giving it up. And I was looking at the grains, and if you look at the grains, this is um, this is wheat, continuous contract at the lows. If you're looking at soybean, a little different chart. This is um, rallying quite nicely. It's it's holding the 14 period, the 14 over the nine. Uh, it should go to a higher high. It's trading up 17 at 13.82. If you look at corn, corn as we say here in the Boston area. Down at the bottom, if you're looking at a sugar, I think it finally <clears throat> yeah, broke out of that peak C1, C2, C3. That means it's just parallel highs in the weekly chart. Now it's gone to a leg D. So uh, there are areas that are working. I'll be back. The Dow's down 70 uh, and the S&P Central. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So, a, a chart that I haven't done for ages and I had forgotten about it, which I just read it, is the S&P growth. And I remember now, look at this right side chart. SPYG is a symbol. I remember looking at this and saying, and I went through all the different variations of the S&P. Why? <clears throat> Not why, but B. And the reason why I say B is it went to a peak B at the old, at the 48.1862 all-time high <clears throat> back in January of 2022. And in the Wave methodology, a buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode, which this absolutely did, because look at the MACD, look at the stochastic up in the 90% uh, area, on balance volume was screaming up, nine over the 14 from that breakout from way back, the breakout of, oh, I can't believe them, look at this, the breakout from, come on, really? I'm going back from over here. In 2010, the nine-period moving average in January broke out above the 14. And look, green, green, green. I need to do this here because I, I forgot all about how I thought it had turned down at some point. So let me go to a monthly chart. Here we go. I'll go to this monthly chart right here using this particular technique. Look, here's the nine-period exponential moving average. So we're going to go to... S and P S P X dot X. There we are. Oh man, look at this from 2010 right over there. And that was, I'll give you the exact date right there. So the second, so this is February of 2010. And you remember, we were, we were long from 2009, March, the low, exact day of the low. We went along the diamonds. So this is going to be interesting. <clears throat> uh, that was the Dow I was talking about. This is the S&P. Green, 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 green. This one indicator could have kept you. It didn't keep me, but it could have kept you in the trade from February of 2010 all the way to where it turned pink. Oh, I forgot to look at the price. Let me do that again. <laughs> 2010. So right there. So that was, and let's go to the high. 
1,000, uh, let's call it 1112, from 1,112 all the way through, <laughs> this is impossible, to uh, August of two, 2022 at 41 no, 43, 41, 43.20, yeah, I can hardly see it, 43.25. Unbelievable. And then it flipped green a few months ago, and now it's green. The SPYG has done pretty much the same thing, and, uh, and but it's only the last three months, including this month, that is, that it's flipped to green on the nine period exponential moving average. So let me go back to what we were looking at and that is here. And the question is, um, any thoughts on SPYG position to add into media term? And I'm going to say SPYG, once again, that is the growth part of the um, S&P 500. Pulling back here after this peak be almost at the high that was made back in late July. Um, and I'm going to say yes, where I wouldn't do it right today, even though it's longer term and a big deal if it pulls back from 61 to even 59, it's only two, two, three points maybe, if you're looking at new highs to come. But I need to know that this particular pullback that we're looking at right now is going to garner strength across the board, because if we con constantly have this rotational correction, um, and I'm going to go, I want you to, for six sessions now, be, I have a whole list of things to look at, and I haven't done that because there have been so many other very interesting questions in the show. So let me do this. A, this is a B, and it's still a buy mode B, but it has pulled back sharply. That can change, but the weekly chart is very good. So um, I... <laughs> Looking at an intermediate term, if you have your position, oh, I know what I would do. I would split it. And I'd say at this particular point, at 61 between now and say a point or two lower, if it goes lower, I'm going to say, yeah, but ha this position should have a stop. Now, I know that if you're looking intermediate term, you don't really want to stop. You're, gonna, you're saying, hey, this is the position I want. I'm prepared to give it a five or seven or ten percent leeway but i want to hold it so i would say if you if you want to do it now you could just start a split position of whatever you wanted to put in split it in half you could even split it into three and touch a little bit here maybe two points lower you can add and even two points lower you could add again i'm just saying i would personally if you want my opinion which is what you're asking I'm going to say hold off, but please remind me in another day or two. I'll keep it on my list, SPYG. And, and thank you for pointing that out. I'd forgotten it. And I said, I remember I did this at some point, and there was another S&P, and I can't remember which one it was, that did go to a, a, a D. This one has gone to the D in the monthly chart, but the uh, – and now let me just go through this because it's so important. In the S&P, that peak B that was made in January of 2022, that gets negated. If this peak C right here see, sees a leg D that fails under that previous 48.18.62 high, that says to me, okay, you've got your D. It's accomplished the buy signal to buy mode of at least a D. So that's negated that whole thing that we've been sitting with for over a year saying, how on earth can this fail at a peak B? Um, that's the only way it can fail, if it makes a D before that. Or it has to go all the way back to 2191, under the 2191.86 level, that negates it. All right, so with that said, I, I got a chunk of those things out of the way. Let me just run this again. Um, so S&P, we got to S&P on the short term, pulling back quite viciously here on the 14 period moving average, but all the technicals actually are holding nicely. The QQQ pulling back a little bit, not as severely. Well, on the day at 0.72, it's a little bit more than 0.67 uh, just slide in the S&P and the 0.36 in the Dow, 
<clears throat> but I'm saying that the weekly is still holding very well. IWM was the weaker one yesterday. Today it's again weak. Uh, not such a great chart. And the weekly chart is okay. But this is the weaker one. I just need to go through this now. Gold. Gold is down 8 at 1944. Look how it got repelled from the 200-period exponential moving average. But the GDX was the clue because it went under. It couldn't get to the 30. It made a 30-round number high. I remember we had, I think it was uh, eyeballs in, in the YouTube who said uh, round number. I think it was uh, eyeballs said round number GDX. Now we're looking at GDX is trying to establish it's up five cents. That's the gold minus. But look at the silver chart. That silver chart, that is ugly stuff. Down 42 cents at 23.44. Now it's messing up the weekly chart. I'll be back. The Dow's down, down 127. I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yes, we have a Tiger and a Dan who uh, bought the SH, which is one-to-one -one short the SPY, uh, almost at the top. And uh, it's trading at 13.99. It didn't make a peak C. I could call that a C1. Uh, it's not quite a peak C2, but it has the characteristics. Pull back very sharply. Um, so I just wanted to show this because you see this low bar here. And this is part of the Chapman Wave technique. A low bar cannot be a high bar at the same time. In other words, only at a peak D 
can an instant restart occur? So you see this low that was made at 13.47 on the 27th of uh, July. This is the SH. It's the uh, one-to-one short, the S&P. Uh, this is what you see that leg up and it had a high of 13.71. Well, some people I see call that an A. That's not an A because it's not a trough. You can only start your count after a trough. This is still a leg down. The very next session at a higher low, that's your trough. So only from here, from the right side, from the 28th, was that a 28th? From the 28th, can you start the wave count? So this is not A. That's incorrect. And I'll show you some examples of an instant restart, but this is not A. That's your A. That's your B. That's your C. Just under it, you get your failure. C1, it pulls back, and it's starting to rally. Now, the weekly chart in the SH, uh, that's a little different. You see how the pink nine-period moving average has made a W formation? See the way the MACDs rallied? See the way stochastic went from under, uh, from single digits to double to uh, teen, the teens and then over 20%. See the way the on-balance volume is lagging a little bit? That's why this is struggling some. And that that's the reason why I'm saying that there are still enough areas within um, something like an S&P 500 to say uh, it's not going to be easy. In fact, at this particular point, I'm calling it a digestive rotational correction. I, I haven't gone whole hog into the short side on this pullback because I see Enough. So even today, for instance, we've got a particular stock. It's in the AI area, um, robotics, and it's uh, had a fantastic gain. And we've taken nice profits off it. Um, and then we've tried to get in twice with a fairly tight stop, and it didn't work. But I did that yesterday on the pullback, and between the, the price we got in, the close yesterday and intraday, it was up maybe 4% in, in, in what, a couple of hours actually. And it's given that back. It's still above our entry point. But that's how you have to do it. Unless you can get your entry point with a good cushion. And this particular in, uh, instance with the SH, if uh, our, our Denner got in at a nice level, he can put up with all this, the, the volatility the vicissitude of the of the market itself because it's in at a good level. That's the same with us because we got in um, the short on the Dow at the exact high. It just gives us a little cushion. Otherwise, I absolutely would have got stopped out in that sudden big, you remember it was a Friday, I think, you had that sudden 500-point move up and then it gave some of it back. Uh, that was on the uh, 11th of August. But it didn't take us out. But I would have, if we got in a little later than that, I would have had a stop. We would have been out. So the, the, I make a big deal about attempting very much to try to get the outside of the moves as the, as the turns occur. Why? Because it just gives you that cushion. You, you need to have a cushion in markets like this because otherwise you're going to get whipped around. So uh, with, within that context, congratulations to our dinner for that SH position because it was almost at the high. Now, a couple, now let's just see. I want to read here XLE. Oh, I, I needed to do this because uh, Teddy, Teddy Kegsack st sat in for Tommy who's out, out this week, and he was looking at uh, someone had called in about um, the uh, dollar down. DXY and it's the DXY to get oh USD there we go USD and that was the Polish Zloty PLN and look at this that is a big breakout above the 200 period exponential moving average a leg C I must double check I believe it's a leg C in the weekly chart uh, for oh, all these zeros man so nine six two five nine, oh nine six two five nine. Yeah. So this is a leg C, and this is just a gray leg A in the weekly. So this is this is a really good move, but it started back in July, at about three three point nine four, 
and here we are at 4.26. So all these different currencies, look at this, here's the USD JPY. USD JPY, nice move to the upside, GSSC in the daily chart, leg D did a beautiful left side, right side time match, um, hasn't gone, the, the actual high itself is 151.94, and that was back in 2022, so we've still got a way to go, but yes, your cup formation, how many cup formations have we seen um, that actually go back? Like a large rectangle formation. So this is A, this is B, this is C. And my rule of thumb with a large rectangle formation is that there should be a rally. If we're making higher highs and higher lows, there should be a rally that takes it to at least. Oh, did I just lose something? Uh-oh. Stuck. Oh, there it is. Uh, that should take you to at least the previous high, just under it, just above it, or right on, and then it should pull back. And now all of a sudden, uh, everything stalled. I don't like this. This is not a good sign. At 10.37 in the morning, I need this to be working. Uh, is it working? Yes, it's working, but I can't type. Oh, it's frozen. I can't stand when that happens. I don't know why it's frozen. Um, there must be something that I'm doing somewhere. Let me see if there's anything. Oh, man. Oh, that means I have to shut down. I'll lose all the information, all the notation that I've just done. I've lost. I usually... There must be something going on here. Where, am I missing? Is there a little message somewhere that's saying... No, not mess a message there, no. Message there, no. Oh, 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 not good, not good, not good. Oops. Okay, so how am I going to get out of this? How on earth am I going to get out of this? It's just stuck. That's it. I'm done. Um, and there was somebody, I want you to look at Nike for one of our dinners. Um yeah, I've got a whole bunch of the Bank of America. Oh, man. And if I shut this down, it's going to lose all this notation that I did. The whole thing I just did for that uh, Zloty, gone. Um, no, don't do that. And even my notations for my, I can't even go there. There must be something going on. All right, we've got a break. Good. We've got a break. I don't know how I'm going to resolve this without having to redo all the notations again. I don't know. I'd like to blame Trade Station, but I can't. I'm almost sure that it's probably my system here. They have a very good system. Something's going on. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Uh the Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. You remember all those fantastic charts? Everything I did? Nothing. There's not a letter here. It's up right there uh, at 8.20. Oh, but that's because this morning I did save some of the stuff. Yeah, the cash. Maybe it is the cash. I, I thought I'd clear the cash. All right, it doesn't matter. It does matter. But I'm going to say it doesn't matter. And I'll just show USDJPY. What was that? USDPLN? All gone. Watch. Oh, I must have saved it earlier on. Very good. Okay. So <laughs> you never know this stuff, right? Okay. A couple of questions came in. Uh, what's that flashing at the bottom of your screen? At the bottom of... Oh, that's just because when I scroll across, that's what it does. I have no idea why it goes to the blank screen at the back with all those little icons. If I move the mouse a certain way, i have not be able to figure out my, my, my guy hasn't been able to either. All right, enough of this messing around. Um, okay. Uh, I just want to go through. Okay, Nike. So Nike is trading NKE. Uh, this is the dread potential dreaded H pattern. Look at all these. What's the dreaded H? Dreaded H is when I go to three core patterns that we look at are uh, right there. Straight line up or down. Cup formation arch formation or a mix of one and two or one and three. One and three is red because if it fails at a peak A or a B, it can go sharply below the left side low and then double that distance. So we've seen this actually went to an F and then it rolled over. That's the dreaded H pattern, H pattern. And look what happened here. It turned around. I think that's exactly right. That's an A over there, peak A, gray A, because there's no bimode or anything in it. Or buy signal. So that says that Nike trading at 99.28. The way the, the weekly chart, look at the 9 is so weak below the 14. Look at the MACD is very weak. So the Cassic's flat at 18%, on balance volumes failing. And that just says that this left side low in the 96 area should be tested. Um, but is it in this particular uh, down move before there's an H pattern that goes to an M pattern? Probably there might be a little bit of a bounce, but I can just tell you this. If this candle low of the 28th of 90, uh, is that 98? Yeah, 98.87 uh, is, cl you close under that, not you, but uh, Nike. If it closes under that, NKE is the symbol, uh, in the next two sessions, there's a really good chance it's going to try to test this candle of the 23rd of August that has a high of 90. 99.19, so we're almost there, and a low of 98, uh, 96.55. That's going to be really important. Um, now, a couple of things. Let's see. So we need to make it some profits. What are those again? Yeah, I'll have to figure that browser because if that's what I can just do every day. I actually restart every day because it does almost the same thing, I thought. But I didn't restart today. I restarted yesterday. Twice, actually. 
Um, all right. So with that said, these are the things I want to look at here. XHB. XHB. This is the S&P. Whoops. This is the S&P Home Builders. Had a high at a peak B in, there it is, had a high of 86.61 in December of 2021. Like the S&P, then it pulled back a 50% retracement, goes peak A, gray A, gray B, but the stochastic then went above 80%. So this is a buy mode. So that this last high right here, it's a monthly, so it'll be this high right here, the high of Chapman with two bar reversal, 85.13 and 85.11. So it's this high right here, the week of the 28th of July, that's where you've got peak C1, C2, C3, C4. These are all failures just underneath the D. And then you had this big spike to the upside and uh, yesterday a sharp pullback. That just says that the S&P home builders need to take a breather based on all the technicals that I'm looking at. But that nine-period moving average over the 14 of the weekly chart is stupendous. You'd have to see this at 74.30. You're at 81.21 right now, somewhere in the 74s for that green nine period moving areas in the weekly to go negative. So that's saying there is still, I wouldn't rule out anything at this particular point because all the assumptions that you would make under normal conditions are just not applying. They're just not applying in this particular environment. So um, we were going to short, we did once before short Toll Brothers. And Toll Brothers is um, made an all-time high three days ago, an all-time high after pulling back so sharply from 83.72, the 18th of July, spirals up to the 84s, and now it's and yesterday plummeted down to the 78s, and now it's trading at 79.98. And look at the nine-period moving average in the weekly chart, and that's what I'm saying. You cannot look TLT, the TLT. I mean, horrible. Horrible is being very polite. Look at that monthly chart. It's making the potential for the dreaded H, the pattern that I was looking at, straight line down, makes an arch formation, fails at a peak A or B, hasn't taken out the 91.85 low of October of last year. But wow, it's got red candles and it can't, it hasn't had a green candle in the monthly for a very long time. All right, for five, six months. But that's to do with the interest rate, here's the yield. The yield had a huge spike to 36.44, 3.644, and on the recent bounce, hasn't gone back to it. So that's saying to me that the yields, and I'll go to the TNX, which is the 10-year, that's where most of the yields for um, you know, credit cards, auto loans, etc. that's what they're based on. Um, although when you look at credit card loans up in the 19 and 22 percent area, you have to wonder what, <laughs> how they're getting away with that anyway. Back at the ranch, uh, look, the 10-year is getting close, but it also hasn't broken the high that was made on the uh, 22nd. I think yeah, 22nd of August at 43.62, 4.362, um, and this is a moving target. So when I put the numbers in, they sometimes change. Let me just check out the high of the week of the 21st of October was 43.33. Oh, yeah, that's say the same. All right. So it has gone to a peak E in the most recent duration. And is a if this is an instant restart, those yields are going to go to uh, 45 or 46. But I'm not going to do that right now, even though I always circle a D that goes very quickly within three bars to the le next letter E. But, and look at the double top here. The technicals are not as strong as they were in the monthly chart. But that nine is still way over the 14. I can't rule out anything at this particular point other than to say this is not your father's Oldsmobile or whatever the expression is. This is very, very different to uh, almost any other period we've had in, in a very long time. So with that said, um, I also want to look at the um, ITB, ITB. ITB is the iShares construction ETF, made an all-time high three months ago, then a Chapman Wave two-bar reversal, and now it's a little bit weak. Look at the yeah, peak D, the day, peak D in the weekly, but I have no choice but to draw in the falling X formation and see if it's able to break out above 
will break down below. So I'll put that in and we'll watch it. I'll be back. That was that 178. That's what Chaffin Tiger is. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So, uh, yeah, the ITV, which is the construction, has had a very sharp pullback. But it's still, if you look at the weekly, it's still near the highs. But I, I contend that the market is going to wake up at some point and start to see the whole housing sector pull back, even if it's just a breather, because it's had a spectacular move. And if these rates continue high, if crude oil continues high, look at this. Here's crude oil. Look at CSX. Oh, I hope I've got that chart updated. Yes, I have. Uh, look at this. Dreaded H pattern. Here it is, making a lower low. Um, that's the rails. I mean, you can go. That's the rails. That's not even the jets, which we looked at before. The jets. Um, what about um, da 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 All right, the Jets 18.81 down eight cents. Uh, this is the this is these uh, higher oil is a problem, and that's one of the reasons why, within the context of uh, whoops, don't tell me, send the request. All right, no, we're still okay. So, I, I told um, Ellen, uh, my my um wonderful programmer and engineer that I will do the next hour. I'll do Steve's show because it's I've got a ton of things that I was asked about I'd like to do. But I might have to stop every once in a while 
if I, if I see something that I want to trade, but of course now I've lost all my notation, but you don't need that. You can just use the uh, charts as they stand right now. Is that the blank? Yeah, that's a blank chart. I can show you even from a blank chart, we can do a whole bunch of things. So I'll be back in a, as soon as uh, this show's over for to do the next hour. It won't be Steve Rhodes' uh, Mastering Probability, but it will be my hour in that particular time frame. Dow's down 187. S&P's now down 34, weakening as we speak. This is going to be a very important week because it's the beginning of September. Beginning, oh, they don't call it the fall for nothing. I'll be back in a moment. See you soon.